Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another um, weekly show on Condo Insider. I'm your host for today. And today we're going to be talking about roof warranties, which is a really important topic for a lot of um, condo boards um, and even the general managers and um, resident managers to know this information. So um, <clears throat> my guest today is Sam De Almeida with um, Harper Wynn. He um, carries or he knows all about the warranty business on roofs. So Sam, thank you for joining me today and being my guest and kind of giving us a little tutorial about roof warranties. Yeah, glad so, to be here. So what, what, give us the lesson. What is the main points that we need to, as board members, we really need to know when we're looking at um, doing a roof and then also looking at the, um, the warranties? Because we want to get as much as we can out of the life of our roof and also do the protections because we want to try to avoid all those massive increases in maintenance fees, you know? So we kind of want to, you know, be due diligent and really get as much as we can out of our investment. Yeah, the, it is a dizzying array of different types of manufacturers warranties out there when it comes to roofing. So I'm trying to go through it fairly quickly because uh, there are probably about half a dozen different types of warranties out there that you want to be aware of. And uh, the ones that you'll most commonly come across, and they have different names, because uh, just keep in mind the warranties are a marketing tool that uh, manufacturers use to sell their product. But the main ones that you're going to come across uh, if you're looking at commercial warranties are uh, total system warranties, sometimes called NDLs, uh, which NDL stands for no dollar limit. Uh, another type is the weather type warranty or also known as a leak free warranty. Uh, that's pretty common out there. And then uh, labor materials warranty is another type of warranty that you'll often hear about. And then finally, uh, materials warranty or just a membrane warranty. And I listed them in, in order of how much coverage you get. So the total system warranty or NDL warranty is the warranty that's backed by the manufacturer. So not only do you get a warranty from the installer, but you also get a warranty from the manufacturer for the length of the warranty. So typically you'll see a 20 year total system warranty. And those are typically for roof systems that are uh, either brand new or completely remove your old um, roofing system and install a new one. So what that means with a total system warranty, uh, you'll need a applicator that's trained and installed to install that type of system and they'll follow the manufacturer's requirements and all the components of the roof system has to be approved by the manufacturer. So it's uh, an exhaustive list and extensive warranty that's backed for up to 20 years. And you can go longer than that, but typically 20 years is the standard uh, that uh, you'll typically see. And that's the type of warranty that gives the uh, building owner uh, the best peace of mind because if there's any failures, whether it's due to materials or due to the installation, it'll be covered by either the roofing contractor for the first two years or the roofing manufacturer, which is from the third year on. So you also have 10 year uh, options as well. So just depending on the type of roof system that's uh, installed will determine the length of warranty. Uh, secondary, uh, type of warranty that's out there that's uh, probably a little bit below the total warranty is the weather type warranty or the leak free warranty it's also referred to I've seen and what that covers is if there's any leaks or any issues in terms of the um, the performance of the roof system that will be also covered but it doesn't cover all the different components of the roof so it wouldn't cover if there was say a problem with the roof insulation which is below the uh, say the metal roof or the membrane roof uh, it wouldn't cover the edge metal like the drip edge so there are some limitations but it still gives a pretty good warranty uh, and it's again covers both materials and labor for the life of the warranty and that typically goes up to 20 years. Uh, labor materials warranty is what you'll see most commonly out there and uh, labor materials warranties uh, they have some limitations uh, typically what happens it's uh, prorated meaning over the time of the uh, roof that's installed, it'll 
lose its value in terms of how much the warranty will cover. So maybe, uh, you know, in the first uh, two years of the life of the roof, they'll cover approximately say 90% if there's a, a failure in the roof in terms of the total cost. But as the years go by, it loses its value. So that's sort of one of the drawbacks on those type of warranties. Uh, they're pretty commonly um, available. Uh, just about every manufacturer provides those, but their limitations are that they lose value. And there's a lot of other uh, limitations. Uh, they'll only cover the warranty if it's to do with the uh, defect in the material. So if it wasn't installed correctly, they won't cover that like the other two warranties. It's only if there's a problem with the materials and that building owner can show or provide samples of the uh, roofing that's failed and then they'll do a uh, review and then you'll get some money back after some sort of uh, oh so you get kind uh, of like get a prorated kind of a thing yeah so that's the sort of the third tier kind of warranties and that's the ones that's most often uh, provided on a lot of projects here uh, the the other two that i mentioned there's typically a fee involved because an inspector will come from the manufacturer and typically um, you know, just about all the manufacturers are based on the mainland so they'll send a, a technical field rep that will come out and do an inspection and they'll go through and uh, make sure that everything was installed by the per the manufacturer's requirements wow yeah they actually so fly pretty... somebody out to hawaii to do an inspection yeah and that's their full-time job uh, and that inspector is separate from the sales side so that's his main concern is just doing the inspection and uh, making sure it, it meets all of the manufacturer's requirements because keep in mind they're going to cover that for up to 20 years sometimes even 30 but typically 20 is a sort of uh, a typical type of membrane you have and so, then lastly um, yeah. i have a question yeah sure so you have it installed by one of your approved contractors because a contractor has to be approved through your company in order to do sure. the warranty right yeah. so um what happens in the in the years following after the installation mm -hmm. and um the the company goes out of business the so with company. the total system warranty or an mdl that's covered by the manufacturer even if the company's gone out of business so you get that uh, additional coverage without even having to have that original contractor because what they'll often do is they'll use uh, another manufacturer that's approved to do the uh, warranty repairs. So that's what's uh, uh, great about those type of systems. They do cost more and they are more extensive in terms of the assembly. So the requirements uh, are pretty stringent and they have to use the manufacturer's materials because that way eliminates any um, incompatibility um, issues with the materials. So every component of a system has been tested and vetted by the manufacturer. So often you'll find that that type of, not only that warranty costing additional, but also the entire roof system, all the components costing a little bit more because the roof is not allowed to go and buy different products and different types of products and make them fit hodgepodge. It has to be- So it's pretty firm, specific, um, very specific as to how it's applied and right. even including the type of materials to use for the application. That's right, yeah. So wow. that's, that's what makes it a little bit more expensive but as you can see, in the long run, it will save you money because let's say uh, the contractor goes out of business, then it's all backed up. There's no, well, we used a different product here. Well, we're not going to cover that. No, that's all covered. So that's what they call a total system warranty or no dollar limit as well. So they're not going to prorate it or say, look, we're just going to cover this much. Uh, we're not going to replace the whole roof. In some instances, they might end up redoing the whole roof if it's a, a pretty bad failure. So how does it work when they, um, the association, they, you know, they, um, on the building, they, um, they redo the roof. Mm -hmm. um, and then what if later, either a cell tower is installed or yep. solar panels are installed? How does it impact the warranty? That's a very good question. And uh, a lot of times what happens is they, they'll contact a installer, say a solar installer, and they'll go and start making holes in the roof. And they, they're not following the manufacturer's guidelines and that voids the warranty. So it's very important before you do anything to the roof that's gonna affect it, uh, directly affect it, 
call the manufacturer and say, what do I need? And they'll have guidelines and the guidelines will often be, make sure you have the, uh, an approved roofer. It doesn't have to be the same roofer that installed the roof, just approved. And they'll do the appropriate details and then they'll do a reinspection of <clears throat> what was installed and they'll uh, sign off on it. If they install a, say, the, the most classic example is solar panels. If they install a solar panel and they punch in a whole bunch of holes and it leaks and it was never vetted or approved, then it's on them. It's like, well, you're going to have to call your solar installer because your warranty has been voided because they weren't approved. and they weren't, So you know, it's, voided. it's voided for the entire roof? In the areas okay. that it was installed, okay. wherever, yeah, okay. yeah. And some, you know, typically they'll just say um, as a sort of, uh, I guess, a catch-all, like your warranty is voided. But technically it's just wherever the penetrations are. But at that point, you've pretty much, um, you know, uh, caused issues because the moisture can move around. And so I've, I've well, seen too true. many examples of that, especially when solar first came in the first several years, there was probably at least uh, two, three roofs a year that, we're having a lot of issues where uh, the moisture and rain was just coming down the, the walls and the ceiling. So it's very important that you do that. So when they um, when they install the solar, it's going to get reinspected. Is it kind of like reinspected by the same guy that um, checks for the defects? The same yes. person? Yes, it'll be this uh, field service representative from the manufacturer will come out again and reinspect it. If it's a minor thing like a cell tower or just maybe a satellite dish, then just a couple photos uh, from the installer will will suffice. But uh, typically on a solar one, it, it will be an inspection fee and uh, an actual technical representative coming out there because that's quite extensive. So there's actually nobody here locally that does that? Or... Uh, often there, um, someone like myself, like the, the manufacturer representative will go out there and take a bunch of photos and send it back to the technical review and they'll review it. But uh, most cases, they still have the representative come out and do a thorough inspection, especially on uh, fairly large projects. Wow, that's pretty, yeah. uh, I wanna say intricate because yeah, you know, they actually physically come out. Yeah, um, and get up on the roof. And do that. Yeah. Um, so are, are what kind of, are the warranties different based upon the type of um, material that is used? Uh, I, I basically went through uh, the, the three major ones. The fourth one is a uh, materials warranty. And you must, might also hear it as a membrane warranty or limited lifetime warranty. And that final one is just if there's any issues with the membrane or roof covering, <clears throat> they'll replace the materials at no charge, but you still have to install it. So that one, <clears throat> excuse me, will cover any type of roofing material, whether it's shingles, metal. So that's most common. Uh, the others that I mentioned, the total system warranty, that's typically on the low slope, the flat roofs. So that's on single ply like TPO, PVC, uh, modified bitumen, those um, cap sheet type of roofs. And uh, that's where you'll see that primarily. And this only applies to, of course, commercial roofs, not <clears throat> residential homeowner roofs. Those residential homeowner roofs, they're typically just the membrane or the uh, roof covering warranties. They won't do the whole, <clears throat> excuse me, to total system warranties. Those are strictly for commercial government type buildings. So where do condos come in? Are they still under? under are they they're still under commercial, yeah. They okay. are still under commercial, But what about yeah. townhouses? Townhouses, if they're, they typically fall under residential, uh, especially when it's um, steep pitched or slope roofs like asphalt shingles. So those would just be typically um, materials only warranties. There are a few manufacturers uh, that I know of that will provide uh, labor and materials warranty, but none of them do the NDL total system warranties. They, they still have a lot of restrictions because on those type of roofs, they don't do the edge metal or the valleys or any some of, some of the other um, components. Oh, like when you have different ridges and... Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that, that's why it's a little bit limited on that. And it's sort of developing and changing uh, throughout the years. And uh, another thing that ties in with the roofing manufacturer's warranty is the contractor warranties. So keep in mind, the roofing contractor provides the warranty um, from the company. 
and they'll typically provide a, a two-year obligation to the building owner. So if anything goes wrong in the first two years, uh, then you'll call, contact the roofing contractor, and and they and they're obliged by the most roofing or all roofing manufacturers to fulfill their first two years. Uh, but in Hawaii, uh, the roofing contractor can provide up to seven years uh, labor warranty, but that's the maximum they can provide by law. So they can do a seven year warranty. So some roofing contractors on commercial projects, uh, they'll provide a seven year warranty, but it uh, it's depends, it's on uh, the type of job and also the contractor. Meaning in that first seven years, you're also covered by the roofing contract, which is a, uh, I think a really good thing to have because for most parts you wanna contact your local roofing contract to come out and do the repairs. Okay, so it's kind of interesting because you have your um, your PUDs like um, Ocean Point and Alt Neva Beach where you have single families, but they're considered yep. condos. So right. they would come strictly under a residential versus commercial. So it's gonna right. be more of your buildings that will be commercial. Correct, yeah, yeah, the, the larger. Okay. Some, some of them do uh, uh, meet that um, commercial type. So some of those condos, like uh, I know in Mililani, uh, where they have uh, like uh, several um, units in them, those are typically considered commercial. Oh, okay. So if yeah. there's several units, like maybe four in a cluster, four units in one building, right. and, and that, share would, a that common... would be considered commercial? Correct. Yeah. Share a common. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, that, that makes me happier. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> so you had said earlier about the membrane. Explain to us what the membrane is. So the membrane is basically the outside covering on the roof. So typically when you mention membrane, that's the low slope roof that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. And that means roofs that are typically flat. They do have a bit of a slope typically go up to like a one inch per 12 uh, slope. So those are the roofs when you look at, you can't really see from the street because they're uh, flat. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So that's what I mean by membrane. When, I, when you talk about steep slope roofs, then you're typically talking about shingles, uh, the asphalt type shingles or a metal roof. Uh, and, and those warranties are typically uh, just membrane or um, sorry, only just uh, material only warranties for the most part. But okay. you will find a few manufacturers out there that will give a uh, material labor warranty, meaning they'll do any repairs over the life of the roof. But again, uh, you got to make sure that it's an approved applicator. What is, because <clears throat> you've been in this business for a while, so what would you, your best recommendation to a condo board when they're looking at a roof project? And let's say we're talking about the building or even um, the townhouse. Um, um, what's your best advice or recommendations for them to consider when they're looking at re-roofing and looking at their warranties? And one other thing also you um, told me earlier was the exclusions that they need Correct. to pay attention yeah. to. So yeah, so uh, best thing to look for in a, in a commercial type warranty is a total system warranty or NDL, like I mentioned before, which covers all materials and labor for the life of the roof. And you get a inspection to make sure that it was all installed correctly. Uh, secondly, uh, a no cap on the warranty, meaning uh, NDL, no dollar limitation, meaning that they're not going to limit the amount uh, of money that they're going to cover to repair the defects. So um, a proration or a limit on the actual um, installation costs to repair it, that's what you don't want. You want them to be able to uh, repair all the defects at uh, no limitations. So that's uh, another thing to look at and no proration. So you don't want it prorated, meaning that it won't appreciate over time. I've seen some uh, warranties out there. By the end of the uh, 20 or 30 year warranties, you're only getting pennies on the dollar of what you spent. So it's, it becomes not even worth doing all the paperwork to get that warranty. <laughs> and lastly, the fourth, uh, Thing I look for is transferable. So that means it's not limited to original owner. So I know a lot of HOAs are not going to transfer for, for commercial building owners. It's important because they might sell the building. And so they want to be able to sell that warranty along with the building saying that they have a 20 warranty, they might have 15 years left. So it's a good selling point. So those are the main things to look for when you're looking at warranties. And that's what you want to ask the manufacturer's rep. And the most important 
and another good important thing to note is exclusions. So uh, exclusions are typically materials by others. So things like um, skylights, those things aren't typically included. Um, mechanical equipment like um, HVAC, those aren't included because it's not manufactured by the roofer, uh, roofing company. And then uh, ponding. So ponding is often a concern and that's on low flat roofs. And what ponding is, is standing water. And that means water that's been there for more than 48 hours. So that can deteriorate the roof faster than uh, the life of the roof expectancy. So that might be an exclusion. And uh, of course, I mentioned the course, non-approved contractors. So you always want a contractor that's approved installing it and incorrect flashing details, meaning they didn't install it as the manufacturer has in their uh, published guidelines. And another thing to be uh, on the lookout for is any excessive foot traffic. So a lot of roofs out there, they're not meant for uh, as a walking deck. So, you know, if you have uh, a lot of access um, from that traffic, you'll get wear and tear. So manufacturers won't cover that. And accidental puncture. So if you have a uh, mechanic going up there and dropping his tools and making holes in it, that's not covered as well. And lastly, uh, we already spoke this about this, but the photovoltaic panels or solar equipment or rooftop equipment, those, uh, like I mentioned, are excluded as well. So you just can be aware of those. But um, you know, some of these items can be included in the warranty. You'll, you'll just have to ask. So I, I've seen warranties well that I include accidental puncture, for example, on the TPO uh, fleece back system that we talked about the other time. That can be included. Uh, Photovoltaic panels, if you get inspected, uh, the uh, flashings around there uh, will be included. So it'll be a watertight warranty. So even if uh, there is uh, issues around there. So that's those in a nutshell, what you wanna uh, be wary of. Okay, but so what about what, okay, big topic for Hawaii, wind no. damage, hurricanes. I mean, and no. it could be not even a hurricane because <laughs> we've had instances where the wind is like right. yeah. really bad. You're like, whoa. Yeah. You know, so what about instances like that? If something um, lands on the roof and creates a puncture? Yeah, so that's, uh, it'd be probably another segment altogether. <laughs> and I <laughs> get that question a lot. Uh, so let, I'll put it pretty much clear. If there's a hurricane, no warranties are in effect because it's seen as act of God. So yeah, any uh, um, hurricane related incidents, it's not covered, but high wind events, they are covered. So. When we get those uh, high winds, like 30, 40 miles an hour, um, some of the manufacturers have it in their warranty where they'll cover it up to 55 miles an hour. And that's sort of the industry standard. And that's on low slope roofs. Right? And that means that anything that happens up to 50 miles per hour, uh, the manufacturer will cover um, the, any tears or any blow offs. And that's only on those total system warranties, okay? Um, it won't cover any debris landing, any projectiles, that's not covered. And you might see um, out there that they have 120 mile power wind warranties, and, but those are just membrane only warranties. They're not, you know, they're not gonna cover the installation and all, all those type of things. So those are only applies in total system warranty. So I'm getting a little bit off track because it gets really complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's getting complicated yeah. now. <laughs> that's right. But. Um, one thing I wanted to point out too, which uh, uh, is a small uh, little slide that I have, uh, most importantly, uh, just for all the viewers, it's important to remember that it, at the end of the day, it's the contractor installing it and the design of the assembly. Those are the most important. The warranty is at the end of the day, still a marketing tool because you still have to care and maintain the roof. So that's one of the big things on warranties. If you don't, follow the instructions, a care and maintenance program, then uh, the manufacturer can at any time say, well, you didn't do all these steps, so it's voided. Just like when you have to do regular um, oil changes on your car. So, you know, if you don't do those guidelines, so that's really important. So you're gonna have to give, um, uh, buildings gonna also have to have their maintenance records to show that it has been maintained. Um, right. Like some roofs, every once in a while, they got to be pressure washed. Um, I know sometimes you get those little plants growing in there that grow right. in the wet moisture areas, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so it still has to be, it's not a set it and forget it concept. 
Right, yeah, and the most yeah. important thing for any building owner, just always check the drains and have those cleaned out regularly. Uh, if you do that, uh, you, you're probably 80% there. That's the <laughs> probably the biggest uh, problem is when it comes to roofs, just the roof drains. And I'm talking about on the low slope flat roofs. Uh, on the steep slope, of course, it's the gutters, but uh, you know, just cleaning the debris. Uh, one of the biggest things that I've seen that uh, uh, happens on roof, and, and that's the big um, issue with punctures or damages, when there's too much debris on the roofs, it attracts insects, and the insects can start nesting and causing problems long term, and as well as plants growing, because those roots can start uh, cracking apart right. the membrane. So, right. you know, main thing is removing that debris, because that'll have a place for the plants to grow and for a place for the animals to um, start digging in and yeah that's i find it uh sort of unique to hawaii we get we get the best of everything when it comes to so, that so harper was not the only man, um warranty company around you're there are several others correct yeah so uh, with harper win we're a rep group and we represent carlisle and uh, uh and so they provide a vast array of different types of warranties for different types of roofing systems but there are probably about 20 uh, manufacturers represent our island over the various types of roofing systems, whether it's low slope or steep slope. So just oh, check with really your manufacturer. Yeah. But okay. what I described was a basically a, a basic guideline that most manufacturers follow from what I've seen in my research. So it's um, so when a board is looking at stuff, they're not only looking at the material that's being used and mm -hmm. the contractor that's going to apply it and the method of application and following that. But they also have to do research on the different types of warranties from the different right. companies that are out there. So do was... some roofers um, pretty much, I mean, I, I guess it's like the roofer has to shop for the one that's gonna give, us, give them the best warranty to their clients. That's okay. right. Yeah, okay. it goes three ways, the manufacturer, the roofer, and the building owner. And you guys have, only certain approved roofing companies that you will do the warranties with, right? That's right, yeah. And, okay. and that's because we've vetted these contractors and we've built a team-like relationship and we know that they're trained and that they'll follow the requirements that, they, uh, that they've been taught to do. That's a key thing because um, what you had just said, that they're trained. So you... Make, your company makes sure that they're properly vetted, number one, that they're, the company is sound, right? Yes, yes. Um, financially sound and, and enough. Um, enough product crew. application training and methods right. of application to yeah. follow what's covered under the warranty. Right. And they also regularly train on a regular basis. So every year they'd uh, be updated on some of the new technologies that come out every year. Wow, this was a yeah. lot of information in 20 minutes. It is. Yeah, I, I knew it was going to be a lot to cover, but we did pretty good <laughs> to get everything in there. But I have so those we're, um, we're, yeah. we're nearing the end, um, yeah. and we may do another one um, on some other other products where you cover warranties for that yeah. would be applicable to condos um, and townhouses, yeah. um, or even a single family because we do have a pocket of single families, right? Um, right. Yeah. Eva. Um, so Sam, I really want to thank you for um, being on the show and being a partner with Hawaii Council on educating our condo boards and homeowners. Um, so thank you everyone for um, viewing in today. And we hope, I hope that, uh, Sam and I hope that you got as much, really got a lot of information out of this that um, will help you in making your decisions as board members and um, doing your fiduciary, fiduciary duty and business judgment roles um, we want to give you the tools so that you can make a sound decision that's in the best interest of your condo and your financials. So, um, Sam, thank you so, so much for doing this show with me today. You're welcome. Thank okay. you. Thank you, everybody.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.